Hello everybody, Adam with FANUC here. Uh, we're going to have some fun today talking about parallel processing, uh, the ability to run multiple programs, multiple tasks uh, with your FANUC robot. Um, so let's, let's dive into this thing. So I've, uh, I've created a program in the past. Uh, if you've watched my other videos, you've seen I've, I've used this program. Uh, I just call it horizontal. Let's run this thing so you can see. The robot is just going to move left and right. Real easy. Left and right motion. Now, I've also created a program here today called Blink. So let's say, just for the, for the sake of argument, that I have a status light or, or uh, a valve, a cylinder, something that needs to be fired um, you know, while the robot's running. Okay, uh, without interrupting robot motion. So right here, let me split my screen so we can see a little bit better. Since I don't have a stack light in the vertical world, we'll just keep an eye on uh, DO10 down here. So my blink program, just turn a light on for a half second, off for a half second, on for a half second, off for a half second. So if we look at this, there you go. See on the right hand side of the screen, we'll hit that again. Blinky, blinky. Perfect. So uh, whatever your case may be, you know, if you're running parallel processes, you know, you could be firing a vision camera, you could be firing cylinders, you could be sending status updates. I mean, the, the list is, is almost infinite. But what you want it to do is not interrupt the robot motion. And what's nice about FANUC is we do have multiple processors, so we can process things in parallel and run them. So I want to show you today uh, the secret sauce of, of how to make that happen. So let's say in this horizontal program, you know, uh, old school, you would you would probably say, well, let me let me insert a line. Let me let me call a program and I'm going to call blank. So if you look at this program, we're going to start moving, we're going to call blank and we're going to keep moving. Watch what happens in just a normal flow, right? You, you're probably predicting it. Robot starts moving, stops moving, the blink happens, and then it finishes the program. I'm going to run that again. Keep your eye on DO10 and keep your eye on the robot motion. Starts moving, stops, blinky blink, and then keeps going. And even though it only costs us, you know, a second, you know, two half second blinks, you lost a second of robot motion. So how do we get that blink to happen without interrupting the motion? Well, there's, there's really two pieces to this puzzle. And the first is to modify how blink actually behaves. Okay, Since blink is not affecting robot motion and shouldn't affect robot motion, we're going to pull it out of the, the motion uh, processor. So I'm going to go into my, uh, my select screen. I'm going to highlight blink. I'm not going to open it. I'm just going to highlight it. Down here, you'll see your F2 key says detail. Uh, if you don't see that, you might see create, delete, monitor. Just hit the, the next key, and you'll see detail. So now I'm opening up the details of the program that's named Blink. What I'm going to do is the group. In, in FANUC world, we, we, we call anything with motion a group, whether that's a a, a dial table, you know, an indexer, conveyor, a pump or in this case, a robot. These six axes constitute group one. Well, I don't want Blink to be part of group one. I want it out of that. So I'm going to go down to my F5 key and hit asterisk. And you'll see that it changed this from a, from a one, group one. It now changed it to an asterisk. That's pulling Blink out of our motion process. I'm going to hit the end key to make sure everything's saved. I always hit end. So now Blink is, 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 is a totally different, different program. And that's, that's without even making it a macro. Uh, that's a video for another time running macros. This is just a TP program that has nothing to do with motion. So now let me go back into the, the horizontal program. This call statement, anytime you see a call, you're going to break out of the program that you're in stack, you know, you're going to stack, you're stack these programs, you're going to break out of horizontal, you're going to go into blink, you're going to run blink, then you're going to come back. 
I don't want that to happen. So here's part two of the secret sauce. Let's change the instructions. Instead of using a call, we're going to go down here to multiple control, right? We want multiple tasks. We want multiple processors. So we want multiple control. There's one option. It's a run command. So let me turn my TP on. When I tell it to run, it'll say, well, what program do you want to run? Well, sure enough, there's blink. So now, instead of having call blink, I have run blink. And we also know that blink is not in the motion profile anymore. It's not, not in the group one. So now let's see the difference when this robot runs. Keep your eye on the robot motion and keep your eye on, on BO10's uh, activity. Here we go. Robot is moving. Status flickered and the robot never paused. That robot never paused. Let's run it again. Three, two, one. Running. Blinking is going. Robot still made it to the next page and comes back or to the next stage. So that that's that's really all there is to it. Um, the, the two pieces of the puzzle are to utilize your run command and uh, and to utilize the the detail screen to pull that out of the group mask. And then uh, have at it, have at it. That run can, can become anything you want. Like I said, vision, um, other outputs, status updates, string handling, math, all that fun stuff without ever slowing down your robot's production. Uh, if you like it, uh, you know, let me know. If you got any questions, leave it in the comments. Uh, subscribe, ring the bell, all that fun stuff. And uh, have fun coding. See you guys.